coming of age while living in the White House was likely a challenging experience, but many presidential children grew up to be upstanding individuals. Here's a look at the kids of former presidents who grew up to be all sorts of gorgeous. Named after the Joni Mitchell song, Chelsea Morning, Chelsea Clinton was born when her father was in his first term as governor of Arkansas. Of course, his political career was only getting started. In 1993, when Clinton was just 12 years old, her father became president and the family relocated to the White House. There's no shortage of images and commentary about the then young girl's appearance. She was often the butt of jokes about her appearance. Well, the joke's on them now. These days, Clinton serves as the vice chair of the Clinton Foundation, a nonprofit organization that her father spearheaded in 2001 in an effort to foster leadership and improve health conditions throughout the world. She's also an adjunct assistant professor at Columbia University, an author, a mother of three, and a lover of ballet. Oh, and not at all awkward, in case you were wondering. Thank you! Thank you! Oh. When George W. Bush became president in 2001, his daughter Jenna was 19 years old. Although she was past her awkward phase, she was at the height of her rebellious years. In an interview with InStyle, Bush explained that her father was running for president when she was a senior in high school. She added, It is a particularly selfish time because you're trying to figure out what you want to do with your life. She recalled how she'd tell her dad that she didn't want to campaign, and even told him that he wasn't going to win. By her father's second run for office, she postponed her career as a teacher to campaign, explaining that she had grown up since she was a teenager. Bush continued to evolve, first working as a teacher in Baltimore, then becoming a New York Times best-selling author and a Today Show correspondent. She later became Hoda Kotb's co-host for the fourth hour of the Today Show, Today with Hoda and Jenna. Oh gosh, Go why Army. Did you say yes to Barbara Pierce Bush also spent some time in the White House. As the twin sister of Jenna, she experienced many of the same ups and downs that came with being the daughter of a president. It wasn't always easy. Barbara told The Skim that when she was in college while her father was president, she wasn't doing well in a humanities class and had a shocking encounter with a professor. And she said, I'll give you an A if your dad doesn't go to war in Iraq. Barbara and Jenna also both received attention from the media, whereas her sister was labeled the irrepressible blonde, as the New York Times reported, Barbara was labeled the reserved brunette. Sometimes both sisters were even given the reputation of partygoers, but neither woman embodies the way they were characterized. The two beautiful women went on to become much more than simply presidential children. Barbara Pierce Bush went on to graduate from Yale, and in April 2018 she received the Skoll Award for Social Entrepreneurship on behalf of the organization she co-founded, Global Health Corps, which helps provide health care throughout the world. Susan Ford Bales, the youngest child of former President Gerald Ford, became a presidential child as a teenager. At 17 years old, Bales orchestrated the first and only high school prom ever to be held at the White House. She invited students from her school, Holton Arms, to the famous mansion and also aboard the presidential yacht. Sally Alexander, a retired English teacher at Holton Arms who helped chaperone the dance, told Vanity Fair, Susan at that age was strikingly beautiful. But she became even more striking as she got older as she honed her talents as an author, a photojournalist, and chairman of the Betty Ford Center, a drug and alcohol treatment center. In 2013, she focused her attention on commissioning the $13 billion supercarrier USS Gerald R. Ford, telling Palm Springs Life that the ship was important to her father. She went on, He found out about it six weeks before he died. He was very glad. He was a humble man and never expected things like that, so it meant a lot. I'll be very proud to get her into the fleet helping support America." Now Bales has her sights set on pushing for breast cancer awareness and continuing to support the Betty Ford Center. Caroline Kennedy was just three years old when she, along with her brother and parents, moved into the White House. Just two years later, President John F. Kennedy was assassinated. Not only did the country lose its president, but Caroline and John F. Kennedy Jr. lost their father. This also meant the White House would no longer be the family's home. They relocated to Manhattan and were raised by their mother, Jacqueline Kennedy. Although she had an incredibly traumatic young life, Kennedy grew up to be an impeccably strong woman. She went on to graduate from Radcliffe College and Columbia Law School. Although she has never held public office, she stayed along the outskirts of politics, endorsing both Barack Obama and Joe Biden. 
Although she ultimately withdrew her name, she did announce her interest in the U.S. Senate. She is certainly a force to be reckoned with. In 1986, Patty Davis graced the cover of People magazine with the headline, quote, Rebel Reagan. This was during the same time that her father, Ronald Reagan, was serving as the President of the United States. In her interview with People, she explained her point of view, saying, I think people got used to seeing very obedient presidential daughters. I mean, I considered myself fairly normal. I didn't, like, burn out on acid or something. Davis admitted that she was pretty cynical, especially in the arena of politics. Over the years, however, she has gone through quite a transformation, and her heart seems to have softened regarding her tumultuous relationship with her parents. After Nancy Reagan's passing, Davis told The Today Show, I feel very complete in my relationship with my mother. I feel very clear and clean in where our relationship came to, particularly the last few years of her life. Even during a difficult time, Davis's newfound peace seemed to radiate from within during her interview, a stark contrast to the Patty Davis of the past. I, I made a choice. I, I chose to aim for peace of mind. Trisha Nixon Cox, along with her sister Julie, were once considered the means by which President Nixon wanted to install traditional values back into the United States. In a cringeworthy lecture given by the former president, he explained, Both Trisha and Julie are fortunate that they have the kind of figures that permits them to wear miniskirts, but women should not complain about the new longer lengths because most don't have the figures for the shorter ones. According to Rolling Stone, Trisha is reported to have replied, saying, I don't think I'm the miniskirt type. The president's daughter went on to find love with Edward Cox, to whom she is still married. In June 2021, the couple celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary. Today, she serves on the board of the Richard Nixon Foundation. When Lyndon B. Johnson was sworn into office in 1963 after the assassination of John F. Kennedy, he brought with him his wife and two daughters. Linda Bird Johnson, now Linda Bird Johnson Robb, was 19 years old at the time. Robb was, by all accounts, stunning in the 60s, but her evolution into the woman she is today is certainly more notable. Yet there is something undeniable about her looks. As The Washington Post pointed out, the older she gets, the more she looks like her father. That's not the only thing they had in common, though. She, too, is a Democrat and supports universal health care. She also serves on the board of trustees of the Lyndon B. Johnson Foundation. Outside of the realm of politics, Rob worked as a contributing editor for a popular women's magazine, Ladies Home Journal, and brought her voice to a great multitude of women. It's hard to believe that Malia Obama was just 10 years old when Barack Obama was elected president of the United States. On Inauguration Day, she, along with her mother Michelle and sister Sasha, got to witness her father being sworn into office. Looking back, she would hardly be recognizable all bundled up in her Inauguration Day outfit, a cobalt blue peacoat and black scarf. The oldest Obama daughter has made an incredible transformation since her days as a young girl in the White House. Although she was involved in some tabloid-fueled controversy as a teenager, she still has a good head on her shoulders. In 2017, Obama began attending Harvard University. As the former first daughter grew up, naturally her style evolved with her. That said, her style is exceptionally killer these days. Of course, Obama has a bright future ahead of her, so we're sure her transformation is not yet finished, and we're so here for it. And also, every time you guys play Stevie Wonder, I don't know, I cry a little bit. I do. Sasha Obama was just seven when her dad, Barack Obama, was elected president in 2008, making her the youngest presidential kid in the White House since John F. Kennedy was in office. She grew up in front of our eyes, although her parents did their best to keep her and her sister grounded. Upon moving to the White House, Michelle Obama revealed to the New York Times that she swiftly informed the staff not to wait on her daughters. She recounted, saying, Don't make their beds, they have to learn these things. It's no wonder, then, that Sasha grew up to be hardworking and intelligent, not to mention gorgeous. In 2019, she headed to the University of Michigan for college, where she kept a low profile. The COVID-19 pandemic sent her and her sister back home, but Sasha continued her studies online. Michelle said in an Instagram Live video in September 2020 that her daughters were eager to get back to campus, but it didn't feel safe. I'm just glad that they're, they're staying put even if they're sick of me. 
Later that year, Sasha was spotted dancing in now-deleted TikTok videos. She also demonstrated a more serious side. Her dad told People that Sasha and Malia participated in nationwide protests that erupted after George Floyd and Breonna Taylor were killed by police. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite celebrities are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.